Hey everyone, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be discussing another problem from code forces. Uh, that is yet another counting problem from educational code forces round 86. This uh, C problem is not that easy. So this is a bit uh, tough when you compare to the level of C problems that usually comes at code forces. So let's discuss what does the question states. The question states that you'll be given an A and a B and you'll be given a bunch of queries. So for every query you'll be given L and R. You have to find the number of x in the range L and R for which the given equation satisfies. That means x mod A uh, mod B should not be equal to x mod B and mod A. Let's take an example and understand what does this mean. So if we take A equal to 4, B equal to 6 and then I'll give you L as 1 and R as 9. Let's say there is only one query. So what do you do is you check for 1, you check for 2, you check for 3, you check for 4. Similarly, you go on checking till 9. And you will find the value of x which this equation satisfies is 6, 7, 8, 9. Like if you take 6, so 6 mod 4 and then a mod of 5 will give you 2. And 6 mod 5 mod of 4 will give you 1. So they are not equal. Now, in the other hand, if you take 4. So 4 mod 4 and then a mod of 5 will give you 0 and then 4 mod 5 and then mod of 4 will again give you 0. So these are equal so you cannot take 4. So you can take 6, 7, 8, 9. So the total number of x that you can take is 4. So you got to print 4 as the answer. So to every time you face such a problem how do you approach them? So you think that every x in the range 1 to r can be your answer and then the next step what you do is you try to conclude which cannot be your answers. That is basically inclusion and exclusion principle. So let's take the first case. Let's assume we take x which is less than b, where x can be any number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and goes on till b minus 1. So if we write x mod a and a mod b. So we know one thing, since x is less than b, hence x mod a will always give a number between 0 and a minus 1. Why? If you do a modulus of a number with 4, so you know the numbers written will be 0, 1, 2, 3. So the same is the reason why you take uh, from 0 to a minus 1. And then you do a mod of b. Now you know one thing, x is always less than b. So irrespective of mod, you will always written the same number whichever it was in the range 0 to a minus 1. Let's write x mod b and then a mod of a. So x mod b, since x is less than b, we can write x mod a. Now we know x mod a is nothing but any number in the range 0 to a minus 1. So we have proved that if you take any number x which is less than b and greater than or equal to 1, that will always give equation 1 is equal to equation 2. Hence the count of x will always be 0 in this range. So if you think of what is the next number which cannot be counted. So the first thing that comes into your mind is x can be LCM. If you take any LCM and write it in the first equation, so LCM mod a and a mod b will always give you 0. Why? Because, because A is the factor of LCM and B is also the factor of LCM. Hence, it will always give you 0. And even if you write LCM mod B, you know LCM mod B will be 0 because B is a factor of the LCM. And again, mod A will again give you 0. So we have also figured out that if X is the LCM of A and B, it will never contribute to the answer. Now, what can be the other numbers? So since we have proved that any number within the range 1 to B minus 1 cannot contribute to our answer. So can we say the numbers like LCM plus 1, LCM plus 2, LCM plus 3, LCM plus 4 dot 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 till LCM plus B minus 1 will also not contribute to your answer. Now why can you say that? Let's write LCM plus and consider this as M. So if you write LCM plus M and a mod of A and then a whole mod of B. So if you write LCM plus M mod of A and mod of B, where a plus M is nothing but 1, 2, 3 and it goes on to and it goes on till B minus 1. So let's open it. So LCM mod A plus M mod A and a whole mod of B. So we can say this will be 0 because A is a factor of LCM. So we'll be left with M mod A which will always give you a number in the range 0 to A minus 1. And we know whenever we do a mod B because M was less than B, it will eventually return 0 to a minus 1. Similar thing can be written for the second equation. So if you open the bracket, LCM mod B will give you 0 and M mod B will again give you M. Why? Because we know one thing that M is always less than B. So it will always return M. 
So m mod a will always give you any number in the range 0 to a minus 1. So I have also proved that if you take any number from LCM to LCM plus b minus 1, that will also not contribute to our answer. We cannot get x in this range. Similarly, if you multiply 2 into LCM, and we can again say that a will be a factor of 2 into LCM, and this will also not. So from this, we can conclude that we cannot take x between any multiple of LCM and, and m into LCM plus b minus 1, because we have already proved it. And the other numbers will always give you answers because they will always throw different values. So now let's see how you find the answer. So you are given to find the answer from L to R. So what you will do is you will first find the answer from 0 to R. Then you will subtract 0 to L minus 1 from it. So this is a very standard algorithm where you find the answer for the entire range and the range which you do not require you find that and you subtract it. So eventually you get for L to R. So how will you find for 0 to R? So this is 0 and this is R. So we can say the numbers that we will not take is nothing but the first B minus 1 numbers. The next will be a block of LCM numbers that will be from LCM to LCM plus B minus 1. Then the second will be the second block of LCM that is 2 into LCM plus 2 into LCM plus B minus 1. Similarly till the last block. Now there comes an edge case where you can say the last block might entirely cover R or only a portion of it covers. Now let's take an example. If the LCM is 12 and if the value of R is 100. So we can say the last block will start from 98. But then if you want to cover it entirely for a value where B is 6. So that will exceed because 98, 99, 100 are only 3 values. And for B equal to 6, you got to take 5 values. So you cannot take the entire block. So this is the edge case which you need to take care of. So you know these blocks have to be subtracted. So we can easily say if we can find the block. So what will be the number of blocks? That's very easy. The number of blocks will be R by LCM. We'll get the number of blocks. And then you know every block contributes B to it. So you can multiply B to it to get the number of elements that to be subtracted. And then you know there is something as B minus 1 which will be added. And then you've got to take care of this edge case. So which I'll explain in the code. So once you have done that, you get, so once you have done that, you can get your answer for any range from 0 to y. So you will call the function from 0 to r, it will give you the answer. Then you will call the function from 0 to l minus 1 and that will give you your answer. And once you have got it, you can just subtract it because we just now saw that if you want the answer for this portion, you got to subtract this. And once you have subtracted it and you will get your answer. So you might ask, how did you uh, think about this in the contest? So one of the common ways, if you do not find any solution mathematically, what you do is, what you could have done is, you could have run a brute force from L to R and you could have printed the values which do not match the both the equation. And probably you could have find a pattern and then mathematically you could try proving it and then you could write the solution. So guys, let's see how will the code look like for this. So in the code, I take A, B, Q as the input. And then if A is greater than B, I just swap it because I am under the assumption that B is always greater than A. And then you find the LCM, that's very easy. A into B divided by the GCD. Then you take the L and R. In the next portion, you can see I've, I've written a dry piece of code to just check if my pattern was coming correct or not. Then you know if the LCM is B, that means every possible block will be covered. So we know the answer will be eventually zero because the first B minus one element doesn't give you answer, then every block is getting covered because the LCM is B itself. Or if R is less than B, you will never get an answer. So for that, you've got to print zero. Now how do you find the count? That's very easy. From zero to R, you find it. Then from zero to L minus one, you find it. Once you found it out, you just subtract it and you print it. So let's see how the function look like. First, it finds out how many blocks are there. Then it finds out what is the last multiple of it. That means uh, we took R as 100. So if LCM was 12, it found out 98. So we will find out 98. And then we take the total answer as R. Assuming that every number in the range 1 to R satisfies the given equation. In the next step, we check if the number of blocks is not equal to 0. If it is not, what we do is, except the last block, we subtract B times because every LCM block covers B times. And the next thing that we do is for the last block, either it covers entirely, if it covers entirely, we'll subtract B. Or if it doesn't cover entirely, we know the number of elements will always be 100 minus 98 plus 1. That will be 3 elements. So we subtract them. And at the last, 
we subtract b minus 1 that is the front b minus 1 elements that are to be subtracted now we got to do a check for minimum it might happen l is less than b then at that case you don't subtract exactly b minus 1 element let's say b is uh, 6 and then your l is given as 2 so you don't have to subtract exactly b minus 1 element right you just need to subtract two elements so we just subtract that so once you've done that find count returns it and then you can just print it over here so guys, this was all about this problem. I hope you have liked the video. Just in case you have liked the video, press on the like button. Do subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon.